Hey, hello there. <laughs> How are you doing? It's your friend, it's your girl, it's your sister. My name is Elizabeth Mo. You're welcome back to my channel and I thank you all for coming back again and again and again. Today we want to talk about God's mighty weapon for our warfare. That's what we want to talk about. So we'll be talking about how the weapons work. We're going to talk about how often we should use the weapons and we're going to talk about what the weapon signifies physically and spiritually. So these things we're going to be talking about them. To help me in this journey, I will be reading passages from the Bible. I'll be reading 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verses 1 to 5, and I'll be reading Ephesians chapter 6 from verses 13 to 18. So if you see me looking down, I'm actually looking at the laptop that I'm using as my Bible. So that is where I'll be reading from today, okay? <laughs> yeah, so I'm trying to put it to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and from verses 1 to 5. Now, in this particular verse, in, in this particular chapter, we're going to see what we do to the enemy when we use God's weapons, what we do, and exactly what the enemy is trying to target. By waging all this war on us, you will see how these weapons go to that very core and destroy them. Remember, like I said, it's not my own weapon. It's not our own weapon. They are God's weapon so the the enemy is it, it answers to, is to god not to me so i'm not going to do it in my own way i'm going to do it the way god wants it to be done not in my own way before we continue again i want to talk to those of you that will be looking at watching me for the very first time please consider subscribing if you haven't if you want to know more about this channel which is titled jesus is full of grace and truth and I think in the, in the, in the, in the first five minutes, I tried to explain the reason why we have this channel. So please consider subscribing and please turn on your notification bell. By this, you'll be able to know when video is dropped. Thank you so very much. And I bless you. And I thank you in advance. I would love to see your comments as well. So if you think there's anything that have a, a, a different feeling about it, just let me know in the comment section and then we can talk about it. So thank you so much. And God bless you. Now. Let me read 2 Corinthians from verse 1. He says, Now I, Paul, appeal with all, with the gentleness and kindness of Christ. Though I realize you think I'm timid in person and bold only when I write from afar. Well, <laughs> I'm begging you now so that when I come, I won't be bold to those who think we act from human activities. Now, this is huge. <laughs> What are people trying to say here? That Paul is two-faced. That's what they're saying. Apostle Paul is two-faced. So when they see him, he's very gentle. He's very kind. But when he writes, the words hit them so badly. <laughs> so they, they just can't, they can't correspond. That they, they just, just it, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. This face, this gentle face, with this thing I'm reading in this book, they don't add up. So they think he's double-faced. But look at what he said in verse 3. He says, we are human, which means I'm like you. But I don't wage my war as humans do. And then you wonder, what is the war about? Which means that they are actually trying to make him change, to change some things, to change his reasoning, to change the things that he knows. And that is what he sees as God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons. To knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious acts and then we teach them to obey Christ. Okay, so let me say it gently. What do we use God's mighty weapons for? We use God's mighty weapons to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning. One, destroy false arguments. Two, destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. Three. And then we capture their rebellious thoughts. That means all these thoughts, they are rebellious. We capture their rebellious thoughts and we teach them to obey Christ. That's what we do. That's how we roll. Abby, Apostle Paul, that's how we roll. That's how Christians should roll. Okay, so it's not that you capture the whole thing and then you, you, you capture the whole thing and then you teach them to obey Christ. That is what it's all about. It's not about fall down and die and die forever more. Mm -mm. They have to come back to Christ. <laughs> they have to come back. Right. So that 
with what the weapons are doing. Now, let's now look at the weapons. Let's look at what the weapons are itself. Now that we've done what the weapons do, let's look at the weapons themselves. And we'll find this in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 from verses 13 to 18. Put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of trouble. So it's not your armor, it's God's armor. Every piece of God's armor, you're going to put them on. So you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of trouble. Then, after the battle, you will still be standing firm. So it's not about you fighting the battle now. It's about you fighting the battle and still standing firm. Remember the Bible tells us that our enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion seeking for whom to what? To devour. And we know his mission. His mission is to do what? Is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Trust me, he will not leave anybody until he destroys that person. So he won't spare anybody. So the best thing for us to do is to fight the war and then keep standing. That's what the Bible wants us to do. And how do we even fight this war? This war that we're talking about, how do we fight it? What do we need? Like I said, we need God's weapons to fight this war. But we have to be there physically. So the things that we do physically translate to yes. spiritually. You get. So the first one is to stand your ground. The first one is to stand your ground. You stand your ground. The second one is to defend yourself. And then the third one is when you begin to be offensive. So there are three stages. You stand your ground, you defend yourself, and then you become offensive. So you cannot stand your ground and say you're fighting weapon. You cannot only defend yourself and say you're fighting weapon. You cannot only throw offensive missiles and say you're fighting um, a war. No. You have to do the three together to fight the war. So let's look at it. So how do you stand to your ground? Verses 14 to 15 of Ephesians tells us how we stand our ground. And it's in three places, three, and it's in three ways. The first one, let me have a look. The first one is to put on the belt of truth. Which means we have to say the truth at all times. Saying the truth, living for the truth, giving out the truth to people, anything that concerns truth, you're doing it, that is you standing in one way. You have to be able to stand. So you have to put on the belt of the truth. So the truth must not be far from us. Secondly, we want to put on the breastplate of righteousness, which means that we must have a righteous life. We must live righteously. This is a breastplate. This is like a defense for us as well, but it actually it translates to standing. Okay, so we want to live a righteous life according to God's standard. And then thirdly, we want to spread the good news of, the, of God. That means we want to keep on evangelizing. We want to keep on telling people about God. So when you do these three things, you are standing. So that's how we stand. That is how we stand. So you cannot do either of these three and say you're standing. No, we're going to be doing the three of them. And that is how we stand. So you standing up to the enemy itself. We've not even started the war. We're still standing up. So these three things equates to you standing up. Okay. Yeah. So secondly, we're going to be defending. Okay. We're going to be defending. The first thing, there are two ways for us to defend. The first one is to have faith. And the second one is to nurture our salvation. The first one is to have faith. The second one is to nurture our salvation. So when you have faith in the Lord, you are defending yourself. Look at it in the um, Verse 16, it says, in addition to all this, hold up the shield of faith. And what does this do? It helps to stop the arrows from the devil. So every arrow that the devil is, 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 is firing towards you, once we have faith, those enemies will not come near you. So this is the reason why you have faith, because it's going to be your shield. It's going to be the shield. So we need the, the, the sorry, we need the, the shield, the, the faith to be our shield. Then we need our salvation. That means you, you have to be in Christ. You must you have to be in Christ. If you're if you're in Christ, you nurture your salvation. If you're not yet in Christ, you give your life to Christ. How do you give your life to Christ? By saying these prayers after me. Dear Lord and God, I come before you at this time and I surrender everything to you, Lord. I want you to come into my life, be my Lord and my personal savior. Take over my life. I pray that you forgive me for all the times that I have wasted that I have not come before you, O oh God. But have mercy upon me and take me into your kingdom right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Say it and with all your heart. Mean it with all your heart. And that's you.
okay so you begin to nurture that everything that you've said you begin to nurture it so that is how you put on the helmet on your head and what are the what is the helmet going to do for you the helmet is going to protect your head you put your helmet on your head is it even on a motorbike you need a helmet you put a helmet on your head it's going to guide you again maybe stones maybe when the enemy throws stones maybe when the enemy has hand weapons okay fist or any other thing that wants to attack your head so once you have the salvation you nurture it or if you don't have it you get it that is what it's going to do for you now the third part is when you now become to be offensive and the only form of offense that you can take is the word of god the only form of offense you can take is the word of god which equates to what the sword of the spirit that's it that's it that's the only thing you can take the sword of the spirit which is the word of god okay now verse 18 i want there are some people that argue that verse 18 is not part of the armor of god but yes i want to believe in i want i i, I believe that as well i mean that's full of thoughts to be honest that is not part of it but prayer connects us to the power of god so in as much as in as much as the the prayer is not part of the weapon it connects us to the power of god so and then we know how important it is if you know how important connection or communication is especially when you go for a battle mm -hmm. imagine a soldier going to war without taking instructions from his commander <laughs> imagine you can and they say communication can be argued to be the difference between victory or defeat do you believe that yeah so connection is very very key it's very key. We have to stay connected at all times. That's why verse 18 says that we should be in the spirit and pray on every occasion. Now, this shouldn't be only when we feel the need to. Because First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 also tells us to pray what? Without ceasing. We don't have to cease at all. Pray without ceasing. Okay? That's when that's what First Thessalonians 5 17 tells us. So this means that we have to stay connected at all times. Whether we are in the battlefront. We are not in the battlefront. Wherever we find ourselves, we have to stay connected. We have to talk to God persistently about everything. Everything. We have to keep talking to God. Finally, Apostle Paul, no, Apostle Paul highlights prayers for all believers everywhere. So our prayers shouldn't just be about us. It should, it should not be about our loved ones. It should, it should not be about the people that we know. Okay, He's talking about prayers for believers everywhere. We can take some time to pray for persecuted Christians in North Korea. You can take some time to pray for Christians in Haiti, Christians in India, Christians in Nigeria. Okay, you can take some time to pray for them. So, this is what I just want to add to all those things. This is what I want to add. So, we are going to take the 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 weapons every day, every minute. Every so thank you so very much for listening. God bless you. God bless me too as I continue to speak. Thank you so much. I love you and God loves you most. Bye.